of injecting a measure of flexibility to the United States dominance on the region. The United Kingdom's role in the Gulf should not be confined to the military field only. Britain can still make a significant contribution to the Gulf security. Its principal interests in the Gulf are the free access to oil at a reasonable price, favorable conditions for trade and investment, and of course the safety of British citizens. Because of its long historical association with it and its wider experiences in the Gulf, the British have an advantage to pursue these interests. The protection of these interests demands a level of relative stability and an existence of friendly governments will dispose toward the West. These are the factors which underline the United Kingdom's stand in the Gulf security. And in order to reach this level, Britain has to play a more positive role and contribute significantly to the Gulf state's social, economic, and political spheres. In this regard, I would argue that Britain should encourage the DCC governments to introduce some democratic reforms which can contribute to a great deal to the stability of the region. I believe the British endeavor in this regard can be acceptable to most Gulf leaders in a view of Britain, a British long-standing friendship and connection with them. Considering Britain's traditional relationship with the, wider, with the Gulf states, I believe it can play a very effective role in this study, the various boundary disputes left behind in the Gulf as a British legacy. That can be a great contribution to the Gulf security. Let me touch briefly on the European community GCC relationship. The first dialogue between the GCC and the, and, and the Europe of Europe was initiated in the 80s in the interest of establishing a free zone, a free trade agreement between the two sides. The divisions within the EU, on the one hand, to levy carbon tax, for example, and the GCC on the other hand, and the inability to establish a full customs union hand held both back from adopting any tangible results in this regard. I believe the United Kingdom could play a more constructive role here, which could represent a vehicle for developing a more innovative approach to world security, rather than the militaristic formula pursued more or less unrivaled by the US right now. I hope today's meeting between the GCC foreign ministers and the European Troika put us on the right track. Regardless of the differences I've mentioned, the UK should push for the completion of the process of establishing a common GCC Europe tariff system and console the European divisions in this matter in order to open the way toward the free trade of the Europe, with the European Union. This, in my opinion, would contribute a great deal to the Gulf security. To summarize, in light of the British historical interest and considering its present involvement, there should be a more active role in the matters of the Gulf security. As in the Gulf War of 1991, more British commitments, where British commitments ranked second to the United States among the non Arab participants in the Gulf War in the international coalition, the United Kingdom's commitment represented one of its largest overseas deployments since World War II. In spite of the United Kingdom's own economic constraints and its supporting role to the United States in the Gulf security arrangements, I believe the U.S. Uh, I believe the U.K.'s active role is essential to providing a measure of flexibility to the uncompromising American policy in the region. The United Kingdom could work close to the DCC member states, both collectively and bilaterally, in order to keep the, cha the channel of communication open to the future. The U.K. could also use its long historical association and its wider experiences in the Gulf affairs to work out a formula for Gulf security to balance the militaristic formula associated with the US military threat in the Gulf. This formula could be derived from the strength of its bilateral social, economic, and political ties between the US and the, GCC, the UK and the GCC states. That, in my opinion, would be a great achievement for an area which so far has been neglected in the wider perspective of the Gulf security. That border of security is what we are all working and hoping for. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this. Uh, <coughs>
elaborate presentation, and I think there are a lot of points to be covered in this presentation and uh, for discussion. Uh, the floor will be open for questions and answers. I think uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman preferred that you ask more questions, and we have enough time uh, for discussion. Uh, any questions? Uh, I wonder, Sheikh Abdul Rahman, if you can elaborate on the, the role of uh, British government uh, for democratization in the, the, uh, the Gulf uh, countries. I wonder how they can do that. Well, first of all, I, the, the, I think. Uh, as we, as we all know from historical uh, events, stability and security of the Gulf is not only maintained by military uh, presence of foreign forces. It is truly uh, the, the greatest element in the stability is, is the local uh, and economic and social uh, stability. And that is, can be greatly enhanced by, by introducing some form of democracy and political participation. And I think a country like Great Britain, which, which with, with its wide experience, both in democracy and with its friendly nations, can introduce such measures. And I'm not saying put pressure on the Gulf to move to, to a Western style democracy, but some type of encouragement would be a great help, I think. And I think that Great Britain can definitely play a role. And, and I say it in, in the true spirit of friendship. They both can offer institutional help. Uh, I mean, we have great many organizations, uh, uh, Westminster Foundation for Democracy, uh, great many other institutions that could truly help introduce democracy in the world. And that could definitely contribute to this community. Actually, this is something that I would like to link up with the, with the previous session. Uh, we, uh, we've, heard, uh, we've heard an exchange regarding Iran. Uh, no doubt we, we are seeing some hopeful signs there. Uh, we also hear that uh, what we are really waiting for, other than the kinder, gentler words, uh, we're waiting for some uh, also action to show us that there is actually a real uh, shift or change of direction in Iran. Uh, in some areas in the Gulf, we are skeptical of that. But I would like. Uh, I'd like Sheikh Abdurrahman to address uh, the issue, uh, and I think it all connects really, uh, the, uh, the issue of what kind of uh, uh, what kind of action uh, from the new uh, Iranian leadership uh, can be construed as uh, as a truly uh, shift, uh, a new shift that, that one can uh, draw, you know, hopeful signs from. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gash. I think uh, this question is quite important. In fact, I heard with, uh, with great interest Sheikh Salman's uh, comment earlier, which I agree uh, uh, with. I think we should not overemphasize the, Iranians, uh, the Iranian uh, moves uh, vis a vis the issue of, of uh, becoming more modern. However, I have to be very fair. Frankly, uh, uh, it is wishful thinking maybe on our side to see Iran become much more gentle member of, of, of the Gulf. I had the privilege of accompanying His Highness the Emir during his latest visit to attend the uh, Islamic Summit. And frankly, we have had meetings both with Rafsanjani, with Khamenei, with Khatami. We are hopeful. I don't know if these signs are truly 100% uh, 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 guarantee for success. And sometimes, as a matter of fact, I think if we give them too much credit, or if we if we if we come if we come too close to Hamid to Hamid, I mean to Hamid, that might hurt them. As a matter of fact, there are quite a few theories about this. I've talked with my uh, uh, friends in the States, and I've talked with uh, with uh, some of my friends in Great Britain here. And the true uh, the true uh, fact is that we all have to be uh, vigilant, pay attention to these signs, give them credit when, when we can but not to overdo it, because generally we can hurt the whole process. As Sheikh Salman just mentioned, the islands are still occupied. Uh, the question of terrorism still lingers in the West, in particular. The, 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 the help within the peace process goes up and down. Uh, at the end of the day, we are all hopeful in the Gulf, frankly. We'd like Iran to become a, a, a more moderate uh, element in our Gulf region, frankly. Their role in the Gulf War, for example, uh, uh, was I, uh, I believe was quite 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 good at least, uh, where they have not played uh, a negative role toward the liberation of Kuwait. 
they have not been very helpful uh, in, in military sense. But the, them being neutralized uh, was quite helpful to the world. Their position was quite, quite good. We hope that uh, what Khatami is trying to make will succeed. Because at the end of the day, we have to live in a girlfriend. And that whatever military presence is always a temporary measure. Um, and I want to link this to the, to the question that uh, our dear friend Hamdan Mahesh asked earlier. You know, having political participation, economic stability, uh, and good neighbor relations with the nation states that are under law is, after all, what we want to do. Thank you. Great, Hale, London School of Economics. Um, following on from the question about Iran and the policies of both the GCC and Britain towards Iran. I very much agree with those who said that it's early days yet, particularly because the question of the center of power is not resolved. And it's been said there are three presidents in Iran, not one, Khamenei, Khadavi, and also Rafsanjani, who has not yet made up his mind what role he's going to play. But that having been said, I think it's important to stress that you're looking at the world from Tehran. You're not just looking at one regional problem. You're not just looking at the problems of the Gulf or Tomsen Abulusa in particular. Iran is involved, by my count, in at least 10 regional conflicts. Uh, we have a border, border that has been defined in the 70s. Uh, uh, we have uh, continued dialogue. We disagree very often on a few issues. Uh, um, they should be passed, for example. We openly disagree, and, and we, we mention this to Iranians. I think we're beyond, uh, I think competition with the measures is usually between uh, parties that are at war, for example, and, and maybe they've had ceasefire and they're trying to build their uh, friendship back. We have a nice communication with it. The question is, frankly, is there any stance vis-a-vis issues that we very dearly, uh, 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 very dearly think of, i.e. the islands of the UAE, for example, or, or certain threats uh, earlier on when the revolution just started. Now, we also uh, uh, witnessed what uh, President uh, uh, Rafsanjani has done when he went to Saudi Arabia, his brief visit to Bahrain. All these are, are continued discussions. I think we're beyond confidence in the measures. The question is, how could we include Iran in a, in a, in a system uh, 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 that, that, would, that would be, uh, that they would become a member of? Now, the question is that, that Iran, we do consider it to be a threat. Frankly, we believe that Iran ultimately is, is more a threat to the Gulf than any other uh, country. Uh, perspective. Having said this, if you're trying to plan something against a nation state that you consider to be uh, uh, a threat, it's very hard to include them in that process. I mean, it's like asking uh, the Soviet Union in its old days to be part of NATO. It is conceivable now that they will become uh, associated with NATO, but it's very hard to try to get, to get them to be, become a member of, of that, that military alliance. Uh, I want to go back to the uh, role of the DC vis-a-vis Afghanistan, which you mentioned. Uh, Bill Richardson uh, had passed through, I think, Bahrain when he came to the Gulf. He also briefly stopped by in Qatar for a couple of hours in the way. And uh, I believe there's a new American interest in having an Afghanistan that is much more stable. I think they've neglected it way too long, frankly. Uh, considering the interest that we all uh, knew of during the Afghan uh, war against the former regime, uh, it's almost uh, it's almost an unsubject for the last eight years. I'm, I'm very happy that finally they've decided to re-engage. I believe that uh, uh, it was quite premature for many of the countries that have recognized Taliban earlier on. And it's not criticism of the UAE here or of Saudi Arabia, but I genuinely believe that we have had uh, less discussion in the Gulf about this than we should have. Um, now, I've mentioned earlier uh, only part of the what, you know, the trouble that we have in GC sometimes vis-a-vis -vis the issue of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, tariff uh, agreements. That is only one. Uh, we, have, we, we have to do much more coordination in this regard, frankly. Because ultimately Afghanistan and Pakistan are both, uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the regional scale, very important to the Gulf. And the stability of that, of that area is most important for us. Uh, Mike, what's your name? Uh, I should start by emphasizing that I have a, a very confirmed Democrat. But can I just go back to the point you made about encouraging democratization and ask you whether it is necessarily the case that democratization will always lead to greater stability? In the Gulf context, is it conceivable that it might also lead to uh, extremist governments, governments that were uh, less pro-Western, uh, 
less committed to peace. Is that also a possibility? Um, I am, first of all, I'm, I'm so surprised to hear a comment uh, such as this, uh, uh, Mr. Portello, uh, because, I mean, you're a member of the, court, of the Tory party and you realize the importance of, of, that, uh, of that political participation. And I was not talking about the Western side and the Central moment here. I believe it's less likely if you have, if you have, uh, if you have uh, a process of democratization in this society, I genuinely believe would definitely be civil. I think this concept that democracy is good for, for certain people and no good for others is something that I despise totally. And as a matter of fact, I believe it is the one term interest of the royal families in the Gulf, and I'm being a member of all of them. It's very important because, and I'm not saying here to totally go to Western side of but I'm talking about some, some element of having anchors in society. And these anchors could only develop if we have a selection process for democracy. Uh, uh, we embarked in this, pro in this process just recently. Uh, we just had the first, for example, I know they're very uh, uh, moderate uh, uh, achievements, but uh, for example, the Chamber of Commerce, we just had an election, uh, it was a long debate with this side. We're going to have the municipal election within the next nine months, and that's going to involve women voting and nominating themselves. It is big changes for us. But I believe that if you get these elements involved, these societies, they become much more committed to the safety of that nation state. They might not be as friendly to the Western state. That's the question. But it will definitely be, become more stable. And I would like to, uh, to have the Gulf views in this regard. Question. You mustn't be surprised that prominent members of the Conservative Party like the NI are a bit jaundiced about democracy. I'm sure we'll get over it. The, uh, the other thing that, um, that I really want to ask you is, of course, um, you actually have spent uh, most of your career in the United States. You were educated there. You were ultimately ambassador there. And you spent a number of years uh, in other uh, roles within the embassy. And I was interested to know, in your view about the UK role, will you be to mitigate some of the consequences of American policy and attitudes towards the area? Now, I wonder if you could say, first of all, in, in, in the nearly 20 years that, in one way or another, you have had an intimate connection with the United States, have you seen any development in what development is now happening? Or am I suppose a more sophisticated approach to some of the problems of the Arab world? And an approach that appears to recognize some protection and claims to equality of the interests of the Arab world with the interests, the obviously previously preeminent interests of, uh, of Israel, which has always been a conflict with America playing a constructive and accepted role uh, within the Middle East, except the necessity of their military might from time to time. If I were to ask you for two or three ways in which you think the British would be helpful in mitigating some aspect of American policy, what would they be? I think your question is quite, uh, is quite important, frankly. Um, I hope that uh, my school in the States and my work there would not affect my relationship in, in here, because I truly also have gone to school here and uh, do enjoy my friendship in the United Kingdom. However, uh, going back to the questions, I believe Great Britain does have a level of sophistication in the Gulf that no, uh, no um, American uh, could achieve, right? and that's purely because of the historical relation, right? uh, and then the level of trust, the level of, 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 of friendship. Uh, and uh, I say this because uh, even on the personal level, we find a great deal of number of, of Gulf leaders who may be a residence here who like to, to associate themselves with Great Britain. Uh, but anyway, let's go back to the more important question. I believe that the, uh, the, the U.S. bias is in the issue of Israeli conflict is obviously a major destabilizing factor in the Gulf. Frankly, one of the major issues that we, quote unquote, the friends of the West within our governments, are very often criticized because, of, you know, very easily because of that Israeli conflict. And when you have uh, somebody like, uh, like Butler commenting uh, uh, on the issue that this missile could attack, Tel Aviv, for example, and forget all about Kuwait City, forget about Riyadh, forget about Manama, forget about Doha, forget about Moscow, forget about Dhabi. It's quite disturbing that. It does not help, nor does it uh, help the, the West, the, the pro-West members of these governments. I want to go back to, the, to, to your questions about how could, the, how could we be helped. I think the, US, the UK is already embarking on that route. The conference in London next week or this week uh, about the peace process is, is the beginning of that. Having uh, uh, the Prime Minister or, or actually uh, Robert Cook show up there, try to go to Jabal Ghanim, uh, is a very important fact. 
I think we, you can do more by visiting the Orient House and a few other places in East, in East Jerusalem. But in essence, we all recognize that it has to be a supportive role to the US. And I think that you, you probably know this more than anybody else. It's quite difficult because of the checks and balances system in the United States for even the Gulf to comprehend what's going on there. Uh, I mean, very often the administration came to us in a personal way and said, please go talk to Gilman, or go talk to uh, Lee Hamilton, or go talk to Senator X, Y, Z. Because it was so hard for them, because they will not appropriate the money, or frankly make it difficult. I remember last summer, for example, I received a phone call from Hassan Abdurrahman, who was the Palestinian representative uh, in, uh, in Washington. And I'm just, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just say this story because it was very indicative of, of all the complexities of the U.S. system and how hard it is for us in the Gulf to recognize. He called and said, you know what, can you imagine this? They've just, uh, uh, our term have expired, our six months. Every six months the Congress would uh, waive the terrorist organization uh, statute uh, vis a vis a and he would be allowed to continue his work. So the FBI came and asked for the office to be closed. Now it's interesting, he, the only way he survived in Washington is because his wife happened to be an American. That's one new reason why they let him stay in the States. And he has an administration who was trying to negotiate for the peace process, trying to look uh, uh, level-headed and uh, impartial. And, and the, the legislative part of that government have asked the, the Palestinian president to leave that country. And it was not for his wife's American citizenship could have been kicked out. It is very difficult for us to understand. And frankly, uh, I think the Americans sometimes in the, in the, in the executive branch find this uh, quite helpful in the process, both in weapons sales uh, and, uh, and asking for things from countries, which is fine. I respect their system. But the checks and balances, frankly, is something that we have to work with. It's not unavoidable. Uh, these these uh, uh, things that I try to articulate is the issue of Great Britain, for example. They can be great companies in these parts. And I, I genuinely believe that Tony Blair has done a great deal by a great accomplishment by having the conference for media. And I'm an optimist by nature, and I believe that the fact that they would go on to meet here will create some expectations, which would force their leaders to try to compromise. And uh, I don't think Yasser Arafat could compromise a great deal more frankly. Uh, we just had the Hamas leader in Doha on a private visit. And it's very interesting because a friend of mine has visited him in, in, the, in Zulke, and uh, he's truly riding on the, on the wave, on the energy that is developed by this negative uh, uh, pressure from the Arab Islamic It is not because the Palestinians have all of a sudden discovered that Islam is the savior. It is truly because of the frustration that they have in, in that. And I hope that frustration does not even uh, elapse in the Gulf, or in the moderate ones in the Gulf that would like to see a rapprochement with us. Uh, please join me to thank uh, Sheikh Abdurrahman and so <laughs>